It's Friday. It's one o'clock. Restaurant called. We got a situation. I'm not going to do what I normally do to fix this type of problem. Usually I would order a pulley. I would order a shaft. We would wait, but I've got to get this fixed. Why? Because the restaurant's going to lose business, especially on this Sunday. People getting out of church. This place is going to be packed. They want to fill their bellies. They want to be nice and cool. Let me show you the situation and then let me show you how I'm going to fix it. Look at this beautiful indoor blower motor. Look at this beautiful shaft. And look at this beautiful pulley. And you might not be able to tell, but it is, it's pretty bad. And it's not gonna set on this shaft and I'm not gonna be able to tighten it. But it flew off, it flew off. This unit is about a year and a half old. I don't know what happened. I guess the set screw wasn't tightened against the keyway, the key stock, and the pulley just flew off. Not only did it do that, but it damaged the pulley by making the hole bigger than the shaft. So what am I gonna do? Well, something I don't normally do. I went home and I got my portable welder. And I am going to weld this pulley onto this shaft. And I may go ahead and order the shaft and the pulley but they need air conditioning. This has to be fixed. So I'm gonna get it done. Got some welding gloves. Got the Hobart Handler 100 ready to go. Got a heavy duty extension cord. Now, you can check and see what wire I've got in here. I have no idea, but it should be okay. I'm gonna leave it in there. I'll check it after. Oh man, I need to clean this. Look at all that. You can tell I haven't used this in a while. All right, so this piece of key stock right here, I literally had to take the hammer and beat this into this uh, shaft because it's no longer square. So I got that done. Now I've taken my Allen tool and I've loosened the set screw right there. And I've got it to where I can now pull it up here. But look, you can see, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> You see how it's definitely not going to work? Okay, so my goal now is to line these two up, okay? And once I get them lined up, which that looks pretty close, then I'm going to tighten up the set screw, and then I'm going to weld. I've got it tightened up. You can see the large gap around all sides. Now the goal is to make it to where it's flat. That way when it turns, it's not wobbling because if it is, if it's even slightly off, it's going to cut the belt off. It's going to break the belt right off. And we don't want that. Also, I want to say I don't recommend this. I do not recommend this. Uh, looks like, oh, looks like I need to come up a little bit. All right, I'm going to come up a little bit. And then again, I want to say I don't recommend this. Do, do not do this unless you know what you're doing. All right, let's take a look. That looks pretty good. It's tightened up. Okay, it's spinning. Pretty good, okay. All right. Oh, by the way, I had to clean up this mask. It was so dirty. All right, let's do this. Hope you guys are ready. I don't remember it being this hard. I've done this once before and the unit I did it to worked great for many years until we replaced it. But I've had to weld this three times now because I didn't have the feed set right, then I didn't have the amperage set right. I've had to adjust it a few times. I've welded this three different times so far. First time it was wobbly still. It wasn't really connected that well. I've got the fan uh, belt adjustment just right but I had to take the fan belt back off, that way I could re-weld it again. I'm definitely not gonna show you this weld because this is terrible, it looks terrible. So I'll show you, if this is successful, 
I'll show you that uh, fan in motion and working. I just got to test it before then. But I think I can get it. Let's see what happens. Back up and running, but it's definitely a temporary fix. I ordered the shaft and the pulley because it's shaking quite a bit. I'm going to show you. I'm going to take the panel off here in a minute. Oh my goodness. That is definitely temporary. That is not good. They really wanted to have this thing going, and I understand. And I did it because I know them, but at the same time, I don't feel good about this, and I don't recommend this. The one I did before, the, the blower was vertical, and the pulley was like this, right? And I welded the shaft on the end of that pulley, and it did not vibrate at all like this. In fact, it worked for many years before we replaced it. But this one is horizontal and the pulley's like this, and maybe that has something to do with it. I feel like I could have done a better job, but man, I, I just hope nothing is severely damaged. I hope I can get the parts, get the shaft uh, and everything replaced, and they don't have any problems. Because I just, I don't want the motor to go bad because of what I just did, and that's why I don't recommend it. All right, but I wanted you to see what I did so that if you are better at welding and you have a better idea and you can make this setup work, then you have the confidence maybe to do it. But don't do it if you are not sure about it. Don't do it. This is the type of wire I was using to weld that. Just in case you were wondering, 0.030 gasless flux cord wire. Back on site a little over a week later and the unit lasted and it worked just fine so they had some cooling I came today on a Monday because the restaurant is closed, so that's a perfect time to take the old shaft and the pulley off and go ahead and install the new one. Let me show you what I got. Got the new shaft, brand new. Got the pulley, non-adjustable pulley, and then I cut some key stock at the shop so that I would have that, uh, have my keyway. If you don't know what key stock is, I'm going to put a video down below for you. Now to get this shaft out of here, I've got a set screw on top and then underneath, I've got another set screw right there. And then for the bearings, take and turn this, I've got a set screw there. And then same thing up top here. Make sure that you turn the disconnect off. Got the panels off in front of the blower housing so I can see the front. And I've got two screws there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this blower housing out. And then I've got two screws right there. But I gotta get these panels out of the way. So I'm gonna get these panels out of the way. And then I'm gonna take this blower housing out. And I'm probably gonna put it right there while I work on it. There are three 3 8 bolts right here. Screws that are bolted into that or screwed into that blower housing for this corner panel. So gotta take those out. That's why I got this bit here. 3 8 oh yeah. Got all the panels disconnected. There were two wires coming from the motor, two different sets of wires. One that went to the contactor, this is the power for that motor. And then the other, it goes through the thermal overload of the motor, and then it goes to the coil of the contactor, right here. So I got two screws left, and they're right here. I'm gonna take those loose, the motor will drop, and then I'll take the blower housing out and everything and get it done. Got the motor and the blower housing out sitting on the table got everything ready got my keyway my allen tools my shaft my adjustable crescent wrench and I'm gonna start by taking everything loose also I was trying to beat everything off with my hammer and get this off but not gonna be able to do it so I'm gonna have to push the shaft from this end out I just noticed something while I'm loosening all the screws. You know, there's a screw for this set right here. These are the bearings. And there's a screw right here. 
we got this one loose but when I came over here there's no screw you know there's two little holes and that one doesn't have any threads this one does though and there's no screw this is just poor poor quality control I just I don't understand this anyways I got everything loose so I'm gonna do a little tap tap and just slide this shaft right through so I took the bracket off that holds the bearings and I'm using a jaw puller to get the bearings off it's pretty simple you just put the jaws on the other side of the bearing and then you take this right here and then of course you got to hold it but you just spin it and it comes right off a little demonstration watch as I turn it it's coming right off there see that back on site got the shaft ready to put the shaft on the wheel and the pulley and I've got two new bearings why did I go ahead and get two new bearings because the set screw came out and I could not find it anywhere also I think the culprit of this motor coming apart is you can see down here there was a bolt down there you see where the hole is let me show you so on this side this is where that bolt is and what happened was see here it is it broke so I found that in the bottom as well this was broke there was no set screw in one of the bearings I don't know what happened how this happened if you ever experienced this please let me know in the comments started raining so I had to come back to the shop to assemble everything but I just wanted to show you what I'm doing here I get the shaft slid through the blower wheel and make sure that the key stock or keyway is inserted and then you tighten down that set screw and then what's next is this little bracket goes over the shaft like this this is the way that it goes you can see it doesn't go like this it wouldn't work that way so it goes like this and then what comes next is this little rubber piece pachink and then this bearing pachink and then this right here and this is what holds it in place because it's got a set screw like that so I'll slide that on there and then tighten it up you want to make sure the shaft is just about even on each side of the blower right just about even and then I've got the set screw that's tightened I've got the bracket in place and now we're just going to slide this over the top right here like so slide it down inside the bracket get it where you want it and then put this piece right over it and then we'll be able to tighten this and then that's what will keep this staying inside this bracket if your holes for your bracket are rounded out see look no big deal just slide the bracket over you know right next to the holes and then use a self tap 3 8 self tap screw and then once you do the new holes see that's nice and tight and that's what you want I'm almost finished very excited to be finished so now that's tight and I put this other see this I put this other bolt in I gotta tighten this up and then I'm gonna mount it and something you want to do is you once you get your shaft even on both sides then you tighten the set screw 
and then you put one set of one bracket on and one set of bearings and then you tighten this set screw once that's tight then you come in here you flip it over and then you push your other well you put your bracket on then you push your other bearings on and then tighten your other set of bearings up and then you put your pulley on and there's my pulley we're almost finished now you want to make sure you can spin it make sure it doesn't hit make sure you have plenty of space on each side and make sure that your bearings are all the way in the bracket all right all right so this angle over here this little piece of metal it slides in and then you've got two screws on top two screws on bottom i'm going to put my pulley on here in just a moment so i found another piece that's broken this right here so i'm going to go get a lock nut a couple washers and bolts that way i can get this thing running but we're almost ready it's just i'm not going to be able to adjust the belt because the brackets broke all right so let's take a look oh yeah the non-adjustable pulley and the adjustable sheave this pulley looks like it's even I got a couple bolts to fix this made sure it was not too tight not too loose routed the wires in the overload and the line voltage line voltage wires right here and then that overload one wire here connects to the white other wire to the coil all right i'm gonna put the top back on and turn it on that's better looks like i may need to tighten up the belt just a little bit but that is so much better smooth this was not fun but I got it back up and running, and there's one more thing I did that I didn't show you. I'm going to show you what I did. See that motor? That is a PSC motor. Condenser fan, it's half horsepower. There was a uh, module and a condenser motor on there, and when I got it fired back up, the module was bad. So what did I do? Because there's a 30-day wait for that outdoor fan and module, I just took and put a regular fan motor on there, I put I put the wire I ran a wire all the way to the contactor and whenever the compressor pulls in the fan will run as well so that's something I had to do a few things I want you to know before the video ends number one get a jaw puller a bearing puller you saw me use one in the video if you don't have one you need to get one why because if you're using a hammer on the shaft you may end up swelling up the end of the shaft and then you can't get the new bearings on so don't use a hammer get a jaw puller get a bearing puller you can get one at o'reilly's you can look it up online see where the nearest jaw puller is or order one offline i'll put a link in the description for a jaw puller so if you need one go check it out go get one. Second thing is pay attention to the shaft one side of the shaft i don't know if you've seen earlier in the video one side of the shaft had a place for a keyway and that's the side that the pulley goes on the other side doesn't have a keyway hole it doesn't have a square squared out section on the end of that shaft it's just smooth right and that's the part that went on bottom and then the part that had the keyway went on top but if i didn't pay attention then i would have put the part with the keyway on the bottom right so the reason i'm telling you this is because if you don't pay attention you may end up having to take the assembly back apart and you don't want to do that hope you enjoyed today's video i hope you learned something if you did learn something let me know what it was down in the comments if you got a question, questions can lead to new content. So definitely ask the questions that you have. If you don't have questions, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. Don't forget to check out the video that I put down below about the key stock. What is key stock and how to make a keyway? I put that down there. Also the link for the jaw pullers down there. If you want more videos like this, go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. If you're looking to further your career, you really want to dive in, you want courses, I've got a bunch of courses for HVAC that I've put together for you. If you're a member, level three, go check out my members only playlist. You've got access to all the members only videos. If you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe, smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians. 
I'm Tad, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.